Ladies and gentlemen, information that we're going to bring to your attention, I think that many of you will find this interesting. This is in reference to mortgage contracts and or mortgage agreements. There is a situation, there is a problem that many people are unawares of, and we want to help you to be better aware. When a person goes and they acquire a loan for a home, remember it is a loan for a home, not a home loan. Many times people hear the word home loan, but again, no one gives you a home loan unless they actually own the property. The banks do not own the property that you are permitted to go out and look and find. It is owned by someone other than the lender. So they're giving you a loan for funds to purchase a home. So it is a personal loan. It is not a mortgage loan, as it is sometimes called. It is a personal loan. They are lending you, according to them, funds to purchase a home. You are required to pay back the funds. If you don't pay back the funds, that's why they put a lien on the home. If it was a home loan, then it would be renting to own because the moment you didn't pay, they would literally evict you from the premises and not have to foreclose on you. So you go to the bank. The bank tells you, well, based on your credit score, um, we find that you qualify for a loan of $360,000. So you can go out and look for a home that is valued at up to $360,000. So you go and you find a home and they tell you, all right, that is pretty nice. All right, we have the loan. We're gonna go ahead and put the paperwork in for funding, but we have to go ahead and take care of inspections and we have to fill out paperwork and we have to, make sure that everything is up to par we have to get title insurance and you do all of that you get the inspections done everything is free and clear guess what mr johns we have got funding for your loan and isn't that interesting just how we remember we told you at the very beginning that you don't have to put any collateral down for a loan of three hundred and sixty thousand dollars Darn it, we changed our minds. Now you have to put collateral down, but you have to put that collateral down after we do the funding, after you've already been funded for the loan. Now you have to sign over the property you just paid for as collateral for the loan that you've already received and we used to pay for the home. That is backwards. That is not the way it's supposed to work. It is not legal. There is nothing legal about that. Why? Because you did not have the authority to place a home as collateral, which you were not the owner of or received and had possession of. Until you received the keys, until those keys were delivered to you, you were not the owner. Doesn't care about what paperwork was filed. Doesn't matter about the paperwork that was filed because the paperwork that was filed was as a result of you going down to an office and signing certain documents. They recorded certain documents on the record, but however, that's only when you sign the deed of trust or the mortgage document. Prior to that, if the loan funds, there is no proof that that property is is yours. There's no proof that you own that property. I hope some of you are understanding what's being said. Again, there is no proof that you own that property. There was nothing filed on the record. So nobody can say that you're the homeowner. Not until they give you the keys and not until you sign the papers as the grantee that has been signed by the grantor. Until you sign those papers, until you sign those actual docs. See, you sign the loan docs. The loan docs are taken care of in advance. That You've been approved for the loan. They have you sign loan docs. It's called loan documentation. So you sign the loan docs, but there's no collateral. 
And if there is collateral, you find that the collateral is like a car or uh, your parents' home or something like that if you don't have very good credit. But for most of you whose credit is pretty good, you don't have to put anything up for collateral. You, you guys understand what we're talking about, right? At the beginning, there is no request for collateral. They even tell you that you don't need to put down anything for collateral for this loan. And then at the end of the loan, they tell you you have to put up collateral. Ladies and gentlemen, some of you are going to get what I'm saying. Some of you are going to go back and you're going to find the paperwork that shows that you didn't have to put down any collateral. Some of you are going to put together an affidavit that's going to have the conversation where they said you were approved for this amount and that you did not have to put down any collateral in order to secure this loan. Some of you are going to document that by affidavit and some of you are going to put that on the record and some of you are going to say, well, they committed fraud against me. They coerced me into this agreement. This agreement is invalid. The deed of trust is invalid because they would not give me the keys to my property. They would not give me possession of my property until I signed it over to them after they told me initially that I would not have to sign it over to them. That's your argument, is fraud. And by the way, four elements you need to prove with fraud. One of those elements is that they gave you false information and that you relied on that false information to your damage and the damage of your property, i.e. placing the damage as collateral, I mean the property as collateral, and having them not give you your keys until you signed for it, and then telling you at the beginning that you didn't need to put down any collateral. Go ahead. I, I've seen loans done all the time, home loans done all the time, where they tell people you don't have to put down any collateral. You've been approved for a loan at this amount. Now, if you want a loan for a higher amount, you will need to put down collateral. They will tell you that all the time. So if you're not putting down collateral, then why are you putting down your home as collateral at the end? That's fraud, ladies and gentlemen. If they the agreement is you don't need to put down any collateral. If that is the case, but then they wait until the end of the loan to say, oh, you got to put down collateral. We're not going to give you the keys. That's fraud. That's coercion. You did it under duress. Okay, and you've been paying under the rest all this time. That voids that contract. Now, the probably the lower court will not hear the argument. They'll ignore you, but you bring up the same argument on appeal. You see, with most people, the way most people have been messing up their appeals and their right to appeal is that they haven't been reiterating their initial arguments. They've been allowing the argument to shift and change and to turn around and spin around because the judges and the attorneys change the subject on you. Your job is to bring them right back home, okay? Your job is to bring them right back to the main topic of conversation. As one of Jehovah's Witnesses, we had this book, we have this book, I should say, called Reasoning from the Scriptures. And in that book, there's a section called Topic for Discussion. And in our ministry school, where we learn how to become speakers, public speakers, there is a topic of conversation section. This is what we focus on. Why? Because there was a main topic of every conversation. That's why you'll hear me say that to people with reference to comments that they'll leave, that that was not the topic or the subject of the video. That was not the subject of the paragraph in the SAP pack. You'll hear me often say things like that because the idea is to stick to the subject matter. You'll hear even the courts talk about subject matter jurisdiction. Well, in most cases, the court does not have subject matter jurisdiction. Why? Because they need in rem jurisdiction in the first place. They need your submission to their jurisdiction in order for them to have the in rem jurisdiction in the first instance. The subject matter, just because it's a legal matter, doesn't give the court jurisdiction. That's not enough to give the court jurisdiction. There must be a valid controversy. So go back over your communications with the agencies, with the courts, and make sure that you stick to the subject. Don't let them distract. Don't let them take away from the subject. Make sure that you stick to the subject. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to thank you for allowing us to take the time to help you to understand that 
when you, many of you, got your mortgages and you got your loans that you were told that you did not need to put down any collateral. But however, after you got your loan, after you got your mortgage, all of a sudden, now you needed to put down collateral. That is called bait and switch. It's illegal. They offered you a product at the beginning, but then when they got you, and they got you salivating. You're just sitting up there salivating, talking about who, who, we about to get ourselves our first home. And you get there and they tell you, oh, no, you can't get this home until you sign it over to us. That's called extortion. Uh, mobsters do it all the time. It's called an extortion racket. Where they come into your property and they say, well, you're going to pay us monthly for protection. And if you don't pay us for protection, then we're going to come and, you know, bada bing, bada bang. Or you're going to pay us monthly and you're going to sign this document right here that says if you don't pay us, then we own your property. Ladies and gentlemen, that's how extortion and mob bosses operate. You don't believe me? Go back and look at the movies. They paint it all out there in front of you. Yes, I said the movies. Because movies are, in most cases, realer than life. All right. Once again, I want to thank you guys for taking the time to listen to this information. We are providing this as a means of assisting some of you who are about to go through the greatest mortgage crisis in the world's history happening right here in a city town village county and state nearest you have a good day everyone